Welcome to your daily dose of dopamine, a different edition because, uh, first of all, I'm Robert. The U.S. remains under the federal mandate. Or Susan Collins is. She's in the airport this morning. <laughs> and I'm in my Those garage. Those who refuse to be so Why? And if you hear announcements periodically, thank you for your cooperation. Why. Thank you for your cooperation. Susan, how are you? Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your cooperation. This is dedication. This this says that Robert and I really think this is important and fun and uh, want to make sure you don't miss day four. And, and it's really important, too, that if someone says something that's an important announcement, you let us know, too, Susan, because we don't want to miss out on what's going on there. So yeah. if there's no parking in the red zone, parking's in the white zone only. Please make sure that's clear to all of us. No one wants to get a ticket. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because that that stuff stuff happening when we can say yes to things or no. Does, does it always have to be the perfect situation to say yes to something? That's a really good point. Right. That's a really good point. This is far from perfect. And yet here we are. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think of the number of endeavors I've had in, in life of, of, of like creative projects. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the things I always get back to, let's say with my films, is there's never a perfect time to go. I never have all the resources I need. I don't have the people I need. I don't have the locations I need, whatever. But the time has come where we've set it up. It's like it's happening and we're going to make the best out of it. We can. And, and, and if you don't say yes, you're not going to give yourself a chance at yes. If you say no, that's what you're going to get is no. Correct. And, and, and so the yes and exercise, you know, literally would tell us to say yes and to whatever we're doing, because we don't know things that might be perceived as mistakes, right, or failures might in fact lead to the greatest insights. It's possible. Have you experienced that in, in our play where, you know, you've made a mistake or you've seen a mistake and then all of a sudden you've seen it flip the other way and go, oh my gosh, that became something brilliant. Right at the very beginning, um, we were playing a game um, in which we were meant to grab something out of space, out of air, and look at it, and then describe what we saw. And I didn't see anything. I felt like I was failing. I was just like, I'm doing it. something's wrong. I can't. There's nothing. And I said, it's nothing. It's just blank. It's just blank white fog. And you said, then describe it as fog. I mean, I felt like I was failing, I was making a mistake. And you're like, talk to us about it. Tell us, is, is it cold? Is it wet? Is it dark? Is it scary? Tell us about the fog. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's not a mistake. It's just being open to whatever's happening right now. Right. And that very game you mentioned uh, is one that is known in many circles as mime putty. And you heard it as mind putty. And when you told that back to me, I was like, oh no. And I almost corrected you. I went, that's so much better. It's mind. 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 Yeah. It is. Using things in space and grabbing this thing and calling it whatever I need to call it. Because the truth is, as I often go to my can of Dr. Pepper, I must really <laughs> inherently want one of these. <laughs> it's a sweet one. Um, yeah, that, that's what it is. So you, you evolved what I perceived immediately as a mistake into a much better description of a thing. And, you know, you also with your, with your white fog, you know, that feeling of failure. Yeah, exactly. Is actually the truth. And, and, and inherently in that, right. There, there's the, the title of the book that we keep at our, our front end, right. Truth and comedy, right. People mistake improv as something that is, you know, inherently, oh, these, you know, brilliant comedians who only perform it. It's like, even they, the top of the top, what they're doing is they're finding the truth in the situation, not the joke. When they joke, they screw it up. They, they to a person, they know they screw it up. They, they, they find the truth in a situation, and that and there's the humanity, the relatability, and then it becomes, oh my gosh, that's me too, right? It's not an out there joke. It's a hit me in the heart. I love you joke. <laughs> and you never know when that's where that's going to take you. Right. But when you've affirmed what I said and then given me an and to open it up. I mean, it just feels so good. Well, thank you for saying that. And, and that's what it is. That, that relates a little bit to yesterday. It is affirming you in the moment right now. Whatever's going on, 
That's the truth. Whether it's an announcement mm -hmm. about the airport or, you know, uh, being in the garage because everyone's sleeping in my house or whatever it is, we say yes <laughs> to that. I mean, that's really the exercise. And I have to say, we're 15 seconds away from the end. Uh, so is there anything you wanted to wrap with? Uh, yeah, just to be open to whatever comes and give yourself permission to say yes and and check out yesandexercise.com because there's a lot of really good stuff in there. Bye.